Hello friends, in this video we are going to see AngularJS introduction and why we should choose AngularJS over other JavaScript frameworks for the web development. And we also have a s created a simple application where we have implemented crude functionality using AngularJS and we'll use this application as a reference to justify whatever points we are going to discuss about AngularJS. So let's start. So the first point we are going to read is AngularJS is a JavaScript framework for creating single page applications. By meaning single page applications is we have a simple or single HTML page and that HTML page will be having the placeholder and all the other views will be created as a partial and those partials will be rendered in that placeholder. Okay, so there will be a single HTML page and all the other things will fit into that page. So this, this is what we call it as a single page applications. We'll show you how we can create that using AngularJS. It is an open source web application framework maintained by Google and by a community of developers. We can add this framework to HTML page using script tag. You can go to the official site of this framework, AngularJS. You can download the JavaScript files, JS files, or you can copy the CDN. Then you can refer this to your HTML page using script tag and you can start your coding. AngularJS extends HTML attributes with directives. Now the most important feature of AngularJS is its directives. AngularJS provides their own directives which are built-in directives. For example, ng-app is a built-in directive, ng-view is a built-in directive and there are many and binds and you can also create your own directive that is a feature provided by AngularJS and then you can use it. AngularJS bind data to HTML with expressions. Now, AngularJS also support expressions. These expressions are similar to JavaScript expressions but these expressions are handled by AngularJS. So in order to specify in any expression you have to include uh, expression inside a double curly braces and that will be evaluated by AngularJS. Now why AngularJS? There are many reasons to choose AngularJS for web development. Few of those uh, I have listed below. So the first one is excellent templating engine. Now the AngularJS template may include a pure HTML, AngularJS directives, expressions, filters and any other AngularJS feature provided by them. So it is very close to HTML and AngularJS has handled it very nicely. We'll see how it is handled. AngularJS handles DOM masterfully. Now in other scripting languages like jQuery, you have to select a particular control and then you can perform any manipulation or operation on that. But AngularJS do it very masterfully and smartly so that you don't have to write much code. For example, let's go to our site, I mean simple application. So we have an add player button here. If you click on this button, you go to a add form. If you check this form, the form fields are empty and this is a go button which basically saves it to the server or the database. Now this go button is disabled. As soon as you enter values on all these controls, so let me do it. So as soon as you enter data and all of these so this button becomes enable so if you use any other scripting language like jquery you have to write a lot of code you have to check you have to i mean raise an i mean you have to attach an event and on that event you have to check whether the field is empty or not and then you have to do a lot of coding to decide whether this button should be enable or disabled but in case of angular js it is very simple so if I go to that partial view so that partial is add player so in this partial I have a form so this is my form okay and inside this form at the end I have a submit button so this is the button that is go button here I have used a ng disable directive which says that player form the name of my form dot dollar invalid okay so it basically says that if the form is invalid then disable the button if the form is valid make that button enable okay so this is everything handled by angular js 
and how we are evaluating whether the player form is valid or not that is done by these required attributes so to each control we have specified required attributes so as soon as you enter some data in that so the validation is resolved for that particular control so as soon as all the controls have the value so this form becomes valid and the button becomes enabled so this directive and form validation everything is controlled by AngularJS so you just have to link the controls and the directives so this is how it maintains connection with the dome we have one more example for you for that I have to go to edit form so this is the edit form it basically displaying the data so here we have a reset button so but the reset button is disabled you can see but as soon as I check this checkbox so this re reset button is basically connected to this checkbox as soon as I check this checkbox the reset button gets enabled and if I uncheck it it again become dis disabled so we have done the same thing in this case as well same scenario so if I go to edit player so there is a checkbox and we have used ng model to create a property in the scope okay scope is basically a view model for a view so there will be a property name reset.checked and at the button level that this is the button reset we have checked reset.checked so basically we have used not operator so if the checkbox is checked then this ng disabled will enable the button otherwise this will be disabled so you can see such a small coding or how smartly AngularJS is handling the dome manipulation so this is all about the dome manipulation and how it is handled by AngularJS easy data manipulation this goes the same as we have seen just just now modules the angular js uses the modular structure design so modules is like there will be a main module now in angular js or if you take example of other applications so there will be a main module which is responsible for initializing the application and then finally all the modules are being registered so in angular js there is no main method basically so we have a main module being created so the ideal structure is to create a main module so we usually create so I have created app.js file so inside this I have defined my main module naming arsenal.app and this module is connected to my main page using ng app directive so you can see here is ng app and I have specified arsenal app so this module is connected to ng app and ng app initializes the angular.js with the html and connect this module so when this module is registered or initialized so this second parameter the first parameter is the name of the module the second parameter is basically the you have to specify the dependencies and you specify the dependency in the square brackets so what happens you have to specify the name of the modules which are dependent on the main module so what happens angular.js is all these modules and will initialize these modules as well so this is my main module and my dependent modules are like controller.js so controller is my, is my second module and directive is my third so basically I have added these module as dependencies so these will be resolved when this module will be initialized so this is how AngularJS follows the modular structure and the advantage of using the modular structure is that each module is a separate entity and you can specify these modules in any order you want and you can test these modules individually so let's move to the next point the next point is MVC architecture and dependency injection so AngularJS also follows the MVC and MVVM MVV structure MVVM structure so here we have the view is basically this is our view and inside this view you can check we have specify data ng view directive so what this directive does is it creates this div as a placeholder so all the partials will be rendered inside this div so if you go to the folder structure we have four partial views so these partial views will render inside that div so this is the view part we have a controller okay which is responsible for passing data to the view and this controller basically calls the server side using services or factories so the for example this is the factory we have created and this factory basically post to the server side so this is the player controller at the server side so if you go to the controller folder we have a player controller and there will be a get players method so 
these factories and services are basically like model so they get data from the server side pass it to controller and then controller pass it to the view so angular js uses mvc architecture and it also uses dependency injection as we have seen in the main app so you specify the dependencies you want to resolve for the main module so the next point is the directive yeah so the main feature or the most important thing in AngularJS is its directive AngularJS provides its own directives uh, just we have seen like ng-app, ng-view so these are the directives which are provided by the AngularJS but you can create your own directive as well so we have created a simple directive that is in the directive.js a separate module which we are calling it from the main module so in so I'll take the example of this slogan URL so this directive we have created so what happens whenever I use this slogan URL with the HTML tag so you can see we have used this just above the placeholder so this this thing will be act as a layout for us and everything partials view will be rendered inside this so this slogan URL we have used as an HTML tag okay and what happens in the directive we have called a template and we have provided a template URL so this template lies in template folder and inside if you go so you can see it will render a h2 tag with arsenal rocks so whatever as arsenal rocks you can see at the top is done by a custom directive you can see it is rendered for every page so this is how you can create our own directives and use in the angular js data binding now angular js supports two way binding a two way binding means there's a scope variable which is the view model and that scope property suppose there is a property in the scope and it is bounded to two controls if you make change in one control it will automatically update the scope variable and also it will update the second control as well so this is known as a two way binding okay for example now you can see if i go to add player or uh, let me go to edit i'll edit a control you can see i have not registered any event on this checkbox but as soon as i update this checkbox it update this reset as well this is because there is a model property being created using this checkbox that is ng model and that model property is connected to this reset button so whenever i make any change it synchronizes the model property and it gives a result to this button so this is known as a two-way binding which is a very good feature now there is a filters as well so filters is one more feature which, which is very important so you specify filters by a pipe operator and then you can perform various operations using filters so one of them operation is if you if you go to the home page so we have a order grid by so we have a drop down which by which you can select any property and you can order the grid based on that so if I click on age so you can see the grid is rendered by ascending order of age if I choose height then it is ascending order of height and if I choose first name again then it will be sorted by first name of again so if you check the code you'll be surprised such small code is responsible for doing the entire sorting so let me go to the particular so this is the partial that is player list so here I have a select so this is basically the drop down I have created a property that is ng model so it creates an order by property in the scope and when I am binding the list so this is the list and I am using ng repeat we'll see ng repeat what it is in the future but it basically works like for each so I am binding this player list to this tr or to the table so I'm using a pipe operator and I'm saying order by order by is basically the angular JS uh, literal you can say or a directive and I'm binding it to the model property so whatever you select in this drop down that will be updated to the model property and this grid will be sorted by or ordered by this this property value so this is how how much simple it is to use filter and to sort a grid using AngularJS I'm going to show one more feature that is a search feature so in order to do that I'll create one text box and 
I'll create one model property that is ng model and I'm going to name it as player search okay and let me add one label as well search so if I refresh the page okay you can see a search text box uh, let me add okay so what we are going to do is whatever we type inside this this grid will be sorted based on that search criteria so in order to do that we have used order by here similarly you can use filter and you can use this ng model property and you can bind this grid with this this filter criteria so what happens whenever you type anything inside this so suppose I am typing theory so that grid will be searched based on that input criteria so if I type uh, Cristiano so I'll get Cristiano so this is how simple it is to filter or sort a grid using AngularJS so this is the powerful feature provided by filters and you can create your own custom filters as well uh, similar to uh, directives let's move to the routes so routing or routes is essential in our application to uh, make it a navigatable and uh, to have a separate URL for each route or each page so how we have implemented in my case is uh, if I go to main app so there's a config function for the main I mean for the module so what we do here is we are using a route provider basically we are using the route provider module and we are using when function so basically it tells that when it's a root URL you have to render player list.html and the controller associated would be players controller when the URL is add, URL is URL will have root plus add player then use add player.html as a partial so this partial will be rendered and it will be using player controller when the requested page is edit player in the URL and plus the ID then use this edit player HTML with edit player controller so this is how you you can sp specify the route and you can create a route or routing or navigatable application so if I go back you can see the route is changing if I edit you can see the edit player and the ID of that player so this is how you can also implement routing the next is the controllers so we have already seen how you have to register the controller so controller we have created as a separate module so we can use controller function to uh, register a controller so you specify the name of the controller and you passing this as a dependencies the scope HTTP and player services and you can scope is the basically view model so you initialize the starting state of the controller or the view by adding values to this scope dot player list and you rent and you refer to this controller using the ng controller app okay you can you use the ng controller directive or we have done this by using the uh, routing basically so whenever that page is rendered we are directly using that controller attribute here and we are specifying the controller okay so this is about controller how you can create it and we also have a services and factories to interact with the server side so basically we can create services and factories which will fetch data or post data to the server side server side controller so we have created a simple factory if you can see here so what it does is it basically calls the server side methods like get players save player update player or delete player so it is responsible for this model is responsible for connecting to the database and or posting to the database and doing the server side features so this is all about the features supported by AngularJS and I hope you must be convinced that AngularJS is very easy to use and you can create a very useful applications using AngularJS I hope you like this video thank you friends